Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, May 17th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Jesse today wrote about the effectiveness of Faraday bags. These are bags that are supposed to block uh, wireless signals and uh, doing so they are protecting, for example, your electronic device from connecting to Wi-Fi or cell phone networks, but they're also often sold to protect, for example, credit cards from being skimmed. In order to do this test, uh, Jesse used uh, Flipper Zero. Flipper Zero, if you're not familiar with it, it's this little handheld tool that basically has multiple radios built in. It's not the most effective or most sensitive device to, for example, detect RFID, but it's pretty good. And of course, it is a likely device to be used by your average attacker. And so far, if a particular device does not block the flipper zero, it's probably not going to block any more sophisticated device. Now, one tricky part about these Faraday bags or blocking electromagnetic waves in general is that the type of protection that you need often depends on the frequency that you're trying to block. And of course, with these different devices, there's a wide variety of frequencies being used. On the low end, you have like these proximity cards that are often used sort of uh, for a door opening and such. And on the higher end, you then have Wi-Fi and cell phone signals. What uh, Jesse found is that the bag that he tested, which at least according to the way it sort of looks on Amazon, is one of the little bit higher quality bags did not manage to block any of the proximity cards and fobs. It did block the credit card, so the credit card could not be read. Bluetooth, it interfered with it, but didn't completely cut it out. Wi-Fi and cell phone networks were, however, cut out. Now, interesting here is Bluetooth, Wi-Fi uses pretty much the same frequency maybe Bluetooth sort of frequency hopping uh, was a little bit more effective here in bypassing some of these, uh, the shielding, or maybe just sort of the signal levels uh, are a little bit different here, which helped Bluetooth at least to some extent to escape the Faraday bag. But really, as Jesse puts it, what it comes down to is if you rely on any protection like this, test it and make sure it actually works. And a new story picked up by a couple of outlets originally posted by Andrew Brandt uh, mentions that SharePoint now apparently is scanning password protected zip files for malware. Overall, this is actually not really that new. Gmail, I believe, has been doing this uh, for years. The problem here is if you are sharing malware, you often do so with a number of well-known passwords. For example, just the password infected is used a lot here. And these systems have a list of commonly used passwords. Infected is one of those passwords, and then essentially just brute force the password from a relatively small list of passwords they'll consider. I don't really see this as a big problem here. Yes, if you are encrypting uh, files, you may assume some privacy here. But on the other hand, we have seen numerous threat actors use password protected files in order to sneak past various antivirus systems. Some antivirus systems, for example, will scan the email that a particular file arrived in in order to find possible passwords to brute force. So if in fact it doesn't work, well, pick a different passwords and you should be good to go. And we got yet another critical vulnerability in VM2, the node library that allows you to run untrusted code inside a specific sandbox with only a limited amount of modules. Now, had a number of issues with this concept in the past where VM2 did allow sandbox escape, and this is yet another vulnerability that allows this. Attack complexity is low, and the proof of concept is already available, so upgrade to version 3.9.19. 
And macOS users, be aware, Sentinel-1 has observed the use of a Geekon against macOS. Geekon is an open source port of the Cobalt Strike Beacon. It's written in Go, so no real big surprise that it's being adapted to different platforms and macOS being one of them. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening. Uh, Please subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast platform. Leave good reviews and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.